All right, folks, uh, welcome back to the uh, Steve Molesberg Show. Um, the U.N. climate talks, and, and it seems like there's always U.N. climate talks, uh, doesn't it? Uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, the temperature hasn't gone up in 15 uh, years or so, and uh, there are predictions that the temperature will not go up and, in fact, decrease over the next 20 or 25 years. But uh, they're still full steam ahead with uh, global warming and all that kind of stuff, uh, man-made. And a block of 132 countries left the Warsaw Conference after us kind of rich nations, I guess, refused to discuss uh, discuss climate change um, uh, you know, us giving money to the rest of the world because of climate change until after 2015. After 2015, how about after 2115? Anyway, joining us right now to talk about all of this is Steve Gorham, Executive Director of uh, Climate Science Coalition of America. And um, hello there, Steve. Hey, Steve. How are you? you? Happy Thanksgiving. Same to you. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy everything. Yep. Great. All right. Yeah. Well, well, let, let let's talk about this. Um, uh, representatives uh, of, of most of the uh, most of the world walked out of these talks. I'm I'm shocked, quite frankly, that the United States didn't join them. I'm I'm, I'm quite frankly shocked that we don't want to uh, pony up to them um, right now and and want to wait till after 2015. But talk about what the point of contention actually was. Yeah, this has been building for several years now. As I think you know, the um the Framework Convention on Climate Change of the United Nations meets every year and has these conferences. 195 nations, roughly 195 nations, attended in Warsaw, Poland to discuss uh, they're working toward a treaty in 2015 that would put mandatory emissions cuts on all the nations of the earth. And uh, many are, are not really interested uh, to agree with that. But uh, in, in the 2010 Cancun conference, uh, the delegates agreed that the largest share of historical global emissions of greenhouse gases originated in the developing countries. And then, uh, matter of fact, in 2009, uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said, quote, we acknowledge now with President Obama that we have made mistakes in the United States and we, along with other developed countries, have contributed most significantly to the problem we face with climate change. So the industri industrialized nations have admitted that they have called this, they have caused this so-called uh, man-made global warming problem. And now all the uh, developed nations want them to uh, pony up for this. First, there's a hundred million dollar, a hundred billion dollar a year climate fund that's meant to be a transfer from the industrialized nations to the developing nations. But even beyond that, uh, they were talking at this conference about a, a Warsaw mechanism which would provide, provide loss and damage every time there was a natural disaster in a developing nation. Right. So for example, this recent Hurricane Haiyan that hit Philippines, uh, if this mechanism was in place, they would look to the United States uh, for mandatory monetary damage when such an event happened. And when the, uh, develop, when the industrialized nations didn't agree with it in the middle of the conference, 132 developing nations walked out at least for a day or two. So it's really uh, uh, gone down the primrose path. Yeah. All right. So where where did it? Uh, how did it all end? Did it was everybody huggy and kissy? Because this uh, th this this uh, ended uh, a, a little while ago. Well, they all came back in and they got some language. I think they're talking about uh, uh, nations have to sign up for contributions, not commitments. Um, but you know, this is the sort of thing. Some of these people are professional delegates. They do this every year and they go to places like Bali or Cancun. And they like to keep this thing going. So they always come back with some sort of an agreement. But the big thing is they're all ignoring the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is that we've not had global warming for 17 years now. Right. And if a uh, movie detective Dirty Harry was a climate scientist, he'd say, your climate models ain't making it. Well, well, Steve, and we're talking to Steve Gorham uh, here on the Steve Molesberg Show, Executive Director of Climate Science Coalition of America. Um, I mean, they can't what are they gonna do, fold up their tents and, 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 and go home. In, in fact, even here in this country, uh, there's a report out today that uh, the Daily Caller that the Obama administration, EPA, they're working on rolling out hundreds of environmental regulations, including major regulations that would limit emissions from power plants, expand their authority to bodies of water on private property. Uh, and, and, you know, and this is all under the guise of climate change and global warming when there is none. 
Yeah, it's really amazing how many policies, if you, if you go down and you read the actual uh, regulation from the EPA or the statute, at the basis of a whole lot of things is this idea that man is causing dangerous climate change. Uh, corporate average fuel economy standards, for example, the press talks about um, mileage, 54.5 miles per gallon. But if you, if you read that EPA and Department of Transportation mandate that's coming up, everything inside it is greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, high speed rail, I mean, there's a whole bunch of things uh, that are driving our economy and, and changing our industry, uh, all based on the idea that we can control the climate, which is a little bit of nonsense. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of nonsense, obviously, and uh, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know. Uh, where, where do we go from here? I mean, when, when the U.N. report, you know, did, did, when they were figuring out how to address the fact that the uh, Earth hadn't warmed for 15 or 17 years, um, and now the new re there's a new report that's out recently where a former uh, a female who was a real global warming uh, believer uh, now says she believes that the Earth's not going to warm again for another, you know, at least 15, 17, 20 years. It might even cool. Um, how, do they, how are they going to keep this up? I mean, how, how are they going to just uh, deny the facts as they've been doing? Well, you've, uh, it, it is really remarkable that they are. And you're talking about the fifth assessment report that came out in September. Yes, yes. And, and they, didn't, they really didn't mention it. As a matter of fact, early leaked documentation uh, and charts from that report graphed the climate models and then the actual warming and showed that the models were way off. But that didn't make it into the report. And I think you're referring to uh, uh, Dr. Judith Curry at uh, yep. Georgia Tech yep. University. Yep. And she is uh, she's quite courageous. She has switched sides when she saw that uh, um, that the the empirical data was not supporting the models. Yeah. And she's become very outspoken. And a lot of people uh, who are uh, believers in the theory of man-made warming have attacked her. Uh, well, that that uh, that that's that's to be expected. Hey, Steve, have a great uh, Thanksgiving, and thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. All right, Steve, I'm always at your service. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Steve Gorham, Executive Director of Climate Science Coalition of America, telling it like it is. All right, folks, we are going to be talking when we come back with Clint Hill, the former U.S. Secret Service agent, the man who famously jumped onto JFK's limo uh, after he was shot in Dallas. Uh, there's, he's got a great book out with some other Secret Service agents. Uh, can't wait to talk to him right here. Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV.